Hey YouTube, it's Craig here and I'm back with a new video. This is probably my last video for 2021. This is my state of the collection fountain pen edition. I started off my pen journey in 2016 when I found a fountain pen that belonged to an old family friend. I set out to find a way to fix it up and use it. I got obsessed with pens and within like a couple of months, I had like 10 fountain pens, a couple of vintage ones, and then I bought a Lamy 2000 and that turned everything, you know, that changed everything for me. So I bought the Lamy 2000 and I decided, hey, I don't need all these other pens. I'm going to sell them and get rid of them. Fast forward to March of this year, I had just the Lamy 2000. So just this one pen in my collection. I love it so much. But I, my friend Rob messaged me and was like, hey, check, um, you know, I'm saving up for my Grail pen, which is a Pilot Custom 823. You know, just some other things that he had bought. And I go, oh, that's really cool. I remember when I used to collect fountain pens. From there, from that little conversation, it sparked this, pretty much this whole YouTube channel now is based off of fountain pens. So uh, I got to thank Rob for that, but also my ADD brain for making me go crazy about fountain pens again. So I'm going to start off with my state of the collection video with my German fountain pens. So this is them in the order in which I got them. And we'll start it off with, of course, the Lamy 2000. So I bought this in 2016 and it is just a fantastic writer. It's really easy to take apart. Um, it is a piston filler and it was designed in 1966. I made a whole video about this pen and a lot of these other pens. So I'm not going to go into too much detail, but it is a fantastic writer, 14 karat gold nib. The next pen is the Nomos Glasuta Skyline Sport from Caveco. And this just has a medium steel nib. And you might remember this from my video where I compare this to the 14 karat gold nib, but I bought this one as part of the Nomos pencil case. It's a good little pocket pen. I still have it inked up right now. So those were my first two pens that I got. This one kind of by accident. This one I've had for all these years, five years now. And then, of course, the Auto Hoot Design 8. This was the one that I go, okay, cool. So I got a pretty expensive pen, but it was the one that I obsessed over. It was Mark Brown who designed the Nomos Metro, designed this. It popped up on my Instagram feed. I just go, okay, I gotta get it. So I got a medium 18 karat gold nib. PVD coated stainless steel grip section, and then the ruthenium coated brass body. It's a it's a hefty pen. And I have it inked up with Auto Hut Ocean Blue. So I bought that one. I thought to myself, oh, I always wanted a Mont Blanc 146. So I got this off eBay. This is a vintage 1970s 146. It's now the Legrand model. So this just has a monotone colored nib. This one is 18 karat gold, which is kind of rare for the 146. They normally come with 14 karat gold nibs. It's inked up with Around the World in 80 Days Blue, which is my favorite ink from Mont Blanc. Piston filler as well, and uh, not too shabby for 1970s. It is a fine. Shortly thereafter, I got the Caveco AL Sport. This is the one that has the medium 14 karat gold. Bach nib. This is also currently not inked up, but a lot of these Kavikos, I, I don't generally use them all that often. They're, they're nice pocket pens. Might be to have them in my collection, but I just don't, I'm not really using them. Then I got the Pelican M800, which is very similar to the one I originally had from our family friend. This is the classic, the green with the gold furniture, piston filler pen, beautiful 18 karat gold nib on it. This one I write with all the time. It currently has Mont Blanc Irish green in it to match the green pen this one is fantastic and it's a fine as well next we have the new pen for this year this is the Kaveco collection olive green sport i got one of the retro clips on it another pen another Kaveco. spoiler none of my Kavecos are inked up right now this is another really nice pen i did have it inked up with uh the gerbon vert olive when I went to the Orange County pen meetup, I gave away that bottle of ink. So I'm not a fan of that bottle of ink. But very nice pen. Did a little review on it. That's also on my channel right now. Then I got the Lamy Dialogue 3. Still one of the smoothest nibs I have in my collection. 
really nice pen, super crazy smooth, super cool mechanism. I just cleaned this one out. It had run out of ink and it was starting to dry out and I didn't want it to dry out too much, so I just cleaned this one out. But I will probably be inking it right after this video is done. Then I got myself the king of the Mont Blanc pens. This is a Mont Blanc 149. Picked this up from Antique Digger, 18 karat gold nib on it. And this is a medium, but it still writes like a fine. But Greg did a really, really good job taking care of these pens. This is inked up right now with Mont Blanc. Uh, Around the world in 80 days. Blue, again, one of my favorite inks. So much so that I have it in two of my Mont Blanc pens. This is from, yeah, like I said, like 1995. Has a serial number right there. Really, really, really nice pen. And Greg had it for a really nice price. There's the pen I weighed the longest for. This is the Egyptomania from the Heritage Collection. I had a blast making this video. Really awesome pen. I used it up, so uh, it is, uh, it needs to be inked up. But after my little mishap with my vintage pens, I am not inking up quite as many as I was before. Then we have the Rouge Noir Heritage. I love the weight on this pen. This one's really light. And then you get to this one and it's this metal body with a lacquer on top of it. The cap is really light. The cap doesn't feel like anything compared to the weight of this pen. And it's thin, but it just feels so nice. That vintage aesthetic. And then I, you know, was trying to avoid going changing regions or anything like that and i was trying to avoid uh you know uh getting back into vintage fountain pens and that failed spectacularly so then the last of my german pens we have just a regular kaveco sport and the reason why i have this kaveco sport because i wanted to buy some accessories from apple boom pennon i guess because i wasn't purchasing a pen it wouldn't let me buy the Mont Blanc accessories I was trying to get. So I just decided to add this $18 pen on the order and there you go. So I ended up with an extra fountain pen and then I was able to pick up all those accessories that I really wanted. I bought all the bottles of Mystery Black, Irish Green, and Burgundy Red. And then I picked the cheapest thing I picked up was this fountain pen. So there you guys have it. This is my German fountain pen collection for 2021. So that's that, let's move on to the vintage. So in that short amount of time, I went from having one German fountain pen to having 12 German fountain pens. So on the Antique Diggers website, I first saw a Waterman's 42 with this beautiful black chasing and beautiful imprint, it looked flawless. But at the time I go, no, I will not collect vintage fountain pens again. I've made this mistake before, and it's not a mistake, I've just, I know it's a disease and I just, once I start collecting, I won't stop. Well, anyways, I passed on that pen and I really wish I didn't because it was such a beautiful pen. But at the time I bought the Mont Blanc 149. Fast forward to a couple weeks later, I see this one, the 12 VP pop up and he was listing several things on his eBay and I'd never seen one of these before. And I probably won't ever see another one of them again. This is a 12 VP, so it is an eyedropper filled fountain pen with the number two size nib. This one is inked up right now with Mont Blanc Burgundy Red. I was trying to write Merry Christmas yesterday and it didn't work out. So instead I used the Pelican to make that little short. It's all inked up. It's a wonderful pen. This is not its original cap. It had a different styled clip cap. Nice little tiny flex pen and I bought it for the flex. The flex is amazing on this pen. You should check out my video of me messing with the flex on here, but this was my first vintage Waterman's Ideal fountain pen since 2016, since I'd sold off the other two that I had owned. I just fell in love. I just was like, oh cool, I need more of these. The same week that I got this, I went to the Orange County pen meetup. Met a guy named Otto Yang who had all of his pens out and he was selling his some of his collection and I bought this Waterman's 52 for 80 bucks and I was like that's a steal I will totally get that I don't care that there's a crack in it and the cap is a little gets a little loose because of it but it's a really really nice pen even though it was already fixed up 
I sent it off to Greg and he cleaned it up and put a new sack in it. It's a wonderful addition to this collection. So there you go, in one week, I went from having no vintage fountain pens to two fountain pens. Then another one from Antique Digger popped up on eBay. This one also has little cracks in the cap. This is a 52V, so it's a little shorter, still a 52. This one has really, really long tines. You can see how much longer that one is. It's still a number two size nib, but it's just longer. Kind of looks like a 54, but it's not. It is just a really strange long times. So that was an eBay bid sniping adventure. Then he popped this one up on his website and I go, oh, that's really cool. It's got these 18 karat gold bands on it. It's got an 18 karat gold nib and it was made for the French market. Love the retractable nib. So I bought this. Then later that week from eBay, picked up this from Greg again. Judging by the imprints, I believe it's from the 1920s, but this is another Waterman's 52 in that wood grain. And this one also has amazing flex to it. I have not inked it up since I got it. I just had so many other pens that I was like, eh, well, I just, I'll ink it up eventually. There you go. Five vintage Waterman's Ideal Fountain Pens in the span of two weeks. And I was like, okay, I need to slow down and I did not slow down. Then I got a Waterman's 055 2.5V. This is the gold filled, tiny little pocket pen. <laughs> like it's so tiny. <laughs> I I have small hands and I always joke that uh, I, you know, I don't need most things posted. This one I definitely need posted. So this pops on like that. Then it's actually a good size. And if you don't know these little, uh, rings on at the top these were meant to be like worn as a necklace for women to wear as necklaces or go in a vest pocket or something like that so i sent this off to greg and the grip section there was a crack in it so he replaced this part which was really nice of him very nice little pen and i got a good deal on it on ebay next pen i got a good deal on on ebay was this 0752 so this is a gold filled band uh, one single gold filled band and this is also from the around the 20s it has all the patent dates on the clip see all the patent dates on the barrel the imprints are really good it's a little oxidized you can see that brown color kind of shining through but it's an awesome pen it's like a it writes like a medium to a broad this one is also currently inked up really really nice really really great shape and it was not expensive and by not expensive i mean less than 200 dollars this one also had a new sack installed. This is a 52 and a half V, just a black chase hard rubber version. The chasing is really worn down. The imprints are all kind of really worn down. The numbers on the back look good though. This one has a, ooh, this one I should not have in this case right now. It's leaking pretty good from the nib, but it hasn't leaked all over the case like another pen I, I own. But this one has a nice, it goes from extra fine to double, even triple broad. So really nice flex on it. Nice little pen. I have been storing my inked up pens with the exception of the modern ones. I'm not worried about the modern ones, but I've been storing my vintage inked up pens in my old black Franklin Kristoff pen case just to be safe. I don't want that to happen again. Then the next one I got was the 52X, the one that these pens flow so well that as this thing was just laying flat in this pen case, it leaked out all over that spot. So I learned my lesson. I'm not gonna keep them all stored in the fancy pen case, but this is that 52X. It's got the tiny little number two size nib on this giant 55 pen body and it just looks so good. And I paid 175 bucks for this pen. Had it sent out to Greg, he put a new sack on it and it writes wonderfully, just flows too well. So now I know if you have one of these pens, store it upright or in a different pen case that you don't care about. Then I got another 52 and a half This one is in the Red Ripple. This one uh, has a new sack installed. Uh, I just need to get the nib slightly adjusted. You can kind of see the feed kind of sticks out on either side. It's just not heat set correctly. So this needs to be popped down a little bit further. So I am no pen adjustment 
restorer expert, so I always send them out. From what they said, it writes really well, but I don't want to take any chances with that. I'd rather just have it all. I've got plenty of pens to write with. I don't need to write with every single one, but the goal is to have every single one work. In the meantime, this one is just sitting in the case until I can send it out. Then lastly, for now, uh, I have two other pens that aren't here right now. I was talking to Greg about like what were good prices for silver, the sterling silver 52s. And we were talking it, talking it out and I was gonna buy a, a pen that really needed some work. And he goes, eh, for that price, you could just buy a pen that, that was fully restored. In the end, I decided like, okay, I'm not gonna buy this pen. The next day, Greg listed this pen on his website. And I was like, you son of a... Ah, fine. <laughs> so I bought it. This is the 452 in the Gothic pattern. It's a really nice pen. I haven't inked it up yet. And shortly after, I found that uh, 452 and a half LEC that is currently getting its lever, hopefully, laser welded. I bought another uh, another pen that has a number four size nib on it that is coming from England still. But that's my found pen collection for 2021. I've already ordered my first Japanese fountain pen, which will be coming hopefully sometime soon. I can't wait to make that video. It's a very exciting thing, and it's a new chapter in this collection, and I look forward to building upon this, and I really hope that by the end of 2022, I haven't filled up this 60 pen case, because that would be ridiculous. And that's the video. Thanks so much for checking out, you guys. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment down below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe for more content like this, just hit that subscribe button. And thanks so much, you guys. If you want to follow me on Instagram, it's at Craig Rockanova. We'll see you guys in the next video, and we'll see you guys all next year. Peace.